COVID was a real digitization uh, push for our companies. We are taking this challenge of uh, sustainability extremely seriously. It really needs to change from the top of the company. And that's something we have to focus on, where we also at Seat have many initiatives. It's really the people that drive this transformation. That's actually the key success factor. And that's probably the hardest thing. If we get our act together, maybe we have flying cars or driving the airplanes. I'm Henrik Weimer. I work for Airbus. There I'm responsible for everything that is digital in our engineering organization. Uh, and I'm also the president of the ProStep IWEB Association. The daily challenges, uh, there are so many. Uh, it's a huge perimeter with a lot of diversity. I really believe a lot in collaboration. That's why I'm so excited about ProStep IWEB as an association. Hola, bienvenido a Casa Seat. I am André Radon, I'm the CIO of Seat & Cupra. I'm taking care on IT for those brands. I'm also a board of directors members for Seat Code. And since one and a half year, I have the pleasure to live here in Barcelona. The only constant is change. If you look here, we have to go from combustion engines into electrical engines. So transformation needs to be done, and that's a technical aspect. So we need to transform all our infrastructures. We need to transform all our applications. We have to transform ourselves. We have to transform processes. All right, then let's step uh, right in, Andre. My first question to you, uh, the COVID crisis is just over. How did you as uh, CIO of uh, Seat and Cupra uh, run through the crisis? Frankly, it was a, a real big challenge. We had to set up within hours, basically, a whole infrastructure to run thousands of meetings in parallel. We had to digitize many other processes as well, since to send papers to get signatures or approvals from home office to home office is a bit complicated, so COVID was a real digitization uh, push for our company. So there's always chances in crisis. How did you cope with the situation? Aviation industry in general was very hard hit during this crisis. So we had many particular challenges coming from that. And as you say, in every crisis, there's also an opportunity of transformation because the business is a little bit slowed down. That actually opens opportunities to do things in terms of digital transformation that we had not uh, dared to do before. So even transforming a part of our core business to become more digital, more integrated, for example, around our A320 program. Okay, so much for Airbus. My next question to you would be, uh, you have been also on the board of the ProStep IWEB Association, also as uh, chairman. Um, how do you value the association and where do you see the value it can bring? Uh, frankly, I'm, I'm very much reminded of the 10 years I was on the, on the board of directors of the ProStep IWEB Association from 96 to 2006. And why did I do that for 10 years? And I mean, you are a very good example uh, why uh, such an association makes uh, lots of sense since we have uh, lots of different industries in there, not only automotive or aircraft, we have lots of uh, different industries there with problems, challenges in common. And I mean, we got to know each other with a very, I would say, sexy uh, project at the time, which was dealing with long-term archiving. What kind of a sexy topic? Okay, but uh, so you have to store your data for very long, even longer than the automotive industry. So we had common interests. And then over time, uh, we could use also kind of what I would call the verticals of the association. So we have science, we have software industry, we have users, uh, applicants of the software being uh, produced all together. And then we could tackle really also technical problems. I mean, there were times where we talked about REC-EF, requirements, management interfaces. Also, maybe not that sexy, but going across the industry and really learning from each other. I mean, being automotive, there's lots uh, of talk about autonomous driving. I don't know how long airplanes fly autonomous. Uh, that's probably decades already. So we can learn from each other many things. So that's uh, what makes such an association very sensible. And that's 
why I'm still supporting it, even not having always kind of the, the real opportunity to attend all the events the association is providing. Thank you, Andre. I'm also deeply passionate about that and think the association is a greater platform really to share um, experiences and to develop our people through these uh, common projects and to learn from each other. Before we continue, I also want to invite you all to the ProStep iWeb IT Symposium. It's the go-to event for industrial digital transformation. We will be in Stuttgart, Germany on the 7th and 8th of June in the ICC uh, Congress Center there, hosting over 95 uh, world-class speakers from across the globe, from uh, the US, from Europe, from Asia, uh, plus over 30 exhibitors in our exhibition space that showcase their products and services. So please come join us in Stuttgart. It's still time to register. I look forward to meeting you there. So, Andre, uh, what are your main challenges in your business these days? I mean, one crisis isn't enough, as you know. I mean, everybody can read about semiconductors, which is not only hitting the automotive industry, but the automotive industry is hit pretty hard. We have, in general, with all the crises, we all talk daily about lots of challenges in the supply chain. But also here lies a chance. What this helps is really to push data-driven use cases. So if things get short, you need to find the data, you need to find the right sources for whether it's semiconductors or something else. So we also see a big push in that. In order to really support that process, you need on the one hand really your data in order, but also you need to understand your product structure better. And that's something, Henrik, I mean, we started talking 10 years ago about systems engineering and those things. So if you really understand the functionality of your products in a more bill of functions than a bill of material, what automotive companies are very used to, kind of part-driven designs. But if you uh, change that to function-driven designs, you can also exchange kind of uh, a critical parts much easier since the function is uh, what counts. And that's again something where I think the exchange across uh, industries, also with the software companies which have lots of experience in this field as well, is very helpful. And I think the first initiative we had together really to discuss on how we can uh, leverage systems engineering, model-based engineering, and all those things. And as you know, I lost a little bit uh, track the last couple of years since I took some on some new challenges. How's the development at Airbus on the systems engineering field meanwhile? So system engineering, as you say, has been a long journey for us uh, that we started many decades ago because we have a highly complex product with extremely high requirements in terms of uh, safety, reliability functions. So for us, the process really starts um, similar to what you mentioned with uh, the operations and the mission of the product um, and for sure all of the requirements in terms of reliability, safety and so on that is then cascaded really into the architecture of the product. So we have the different components that need to have redundancy and expose functions that answer to these um, mission requirements, safety requirements. And then basically the system engineering flows through the whole development process down to really the, the certification and how do we demonstrate the reliability of the product. It even finds its way into the manuals and the guidelines we give to our customers because they also need to operate according to these um, cascaded requirements. Uh, so yes, it's a deep system engineering process that draws along the entire process chain. And the challenge that we have there today is really to move to a more model-based um, world. So where we use models and simulation to describe these system components and to work together across the different disciplines and between the OEM and the supplier in a more model-based approach. And that's where associations like ProStep IWIP can really um, support us to define these standardized processes of how we work as an industry between OEM and supplier in a standardized way to cooperate based on models and in a system engineering world. All right, so now we come to a segment where we have an outside expert ask us some questions. I wonder who is it going to be? Hello, Henrik. Hello, André. I hope you have some great time in Barcelona. And I have one question for you. We know from discussions with experts within the process of Association 
that uh, the legal requirements around sustainability and uh, the new needs of customers fundamentally are driving changes within our industry. Could you please tell us what observations you are making and particularly maybe in 45 seconds each of you how your organizations are actually addressing those challenges. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, thank you Alain for that question. Okay, so Alan gives us 45 seconds. That's kind of interesting. So what are those challenges? We talked about systems engineering already with traceability as one of those things. But let me maybe do two points. One is the digital twin. Digital twin manifold. Digital twin of a car. Digital twin of a plan. Digital twin of a customer. Digital twin in the metaverse. So there's many things which are functionally, sometimes a little bit artistic, and which drive really complete new needs to us, and which, on the other hand, also provide data where we can rely on and make our conclusions from. That's maybe enough for 45 seconds. I don't know what's your priorities for, for 45 seconds. I think for us, it's the journey towards sustainability. That has been a challenge for aviation uh, since some time. The energy efficiency of our products has always been a big concern for our customers, but for sure we cannot stop there. So on top of efficiency of the product today, we also have uh, work ongoing to work on sustainable aviation fuel. Um, that can be a drop-in solution to replace fossil fuels. We also have work ongoing on um, hydrogen-based propulsions with a demonstrator project that we just announced uh, end of last year, the um, E0 demonstrator. We will modify a A380 to fly with a hydrogen-based propulsion system. And so we are taking this challenge of uh, sustainability extremely seriously. We had also at the uh, last year's ProStep IVEP Symposium our executive vice president for engineering, Jean-Brice Dumont, making a keynote speech on that subject. So there's probably something what I would be curious about learning uh, from Airbus. We are pretty challenged also. There you can read the newspapers. We have to homologate in our products now software, which really interacts with, with our hardware. And I mean, we have very clear and sometimes pretty tough rules we have to homologate against. But I assume in an aircraft industry that's even, even harder. How do you deal with uh, those kind of legal requirements and how do the digitalization and uh, maybe systems engineering is a good example again help uh, to go through those processes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so homologation in our industry is actually called uh, certification. <laughs> so we have a certified product where basically we need to prove to our regulatory authorities that it satisfies the regulatory requirements. And to really do that in the sense of mathematics by a proof of A plus B. And uh, as you said, the way we do this is through system engineering. So all of these uh, regulatory requirements, they are requirements for the transport system and the aircraft that operates within it. And then we have to build a system architecture uh, where we can establish the traceability of these requirements um, down to the specifications, down to the tests and demonstrations uh, that we can really uh, prove that we fulfill every one of these requirements. And that's uh, one of the reasons why these development projects are so complex in aviation industry and take so long. Um, because that traceability with that the safety and reliability of the product is really of primary importance for us. So it's a long culture that we have developed there where we're now in this journey towards more model-based approaches, model-based system engineering, um, and also the, with that the design of the test case kit and the traceability. That's probably something we could kind of lay a little bit more in detail at the other occasions. There must be many things for us to learn in. Yeah. My pleasure. We also have uh, projects in the ProStep IVIP Association that develop that uh, around system engineering, for example, because there again we have the question of um, how do we work between OEMs and suppliers in a, in a traceable process. We have also um, initiatives ongoing to develop the use of simulation as a means to really prove compliance. Um, and that can only happen through an industry effort because it cannot be one um, company that really drives that as a standard towards the regulatory authorities. We look for consensus and that's again through associations that we can do this consensus building to move forward in our digitalization journey. Okay, Andre, let's talk a little bit about the industrial world of things. Industry 4.0, so where we move to more connected plants, uh, collecting data in the processes and drawing value from that. Can you tell us a little bit about Industry 4.0 at the end? 
Yes, I can. I, as I said, we worked together with the Volkswagen Group. The Volkswagen Group developed a platform, what we call the DPP, the Digital Production Platform, and, and SEAT is using that with many use cases. So the DPP is actually the connection between all our plants. It's kind of the platform which connects all our plants, more than 120 plants which, which the Volkswagen Group has, with all the edge devices which are in those plants and uh, where we have many of uh, the typical data cases, let's say, predictive maintenance, uh, industrial computer vision in order to ensure the quality and so on. So there's many big initiatives uh, ongoing on the DPP and then maybe also interesting for other companies outside the, the Volkswagen family, there is a super DPP, which is called the Industrial Cloud, which is also open to third parties and where we have uh, many third parties already on, which then can access into the DPP and where we can uh, have especially a very interesting logistics uh, use cases where we get pooled parts instead of really pushed parts and uh, which is going to help us also to get through all those challenges we have uh, currently and probably also in the future in the supply chain. So, so that's a major focus of us. Mm. Interesting. And to what extent do you manage to uh, also onboard your suppliers into this DPP uh, well? It's, it's, that's kind of the, the hard part. There's uh, many initiatives also to make sure that the third parties, the suppliers, feel that their data are safe on that uh, platform. So we are also engaged in all those data initiatives uh, like the IDSA, the International Data Space Association, or GAIA-X, the European Cloud, uh, you could call it, or Katina-X, which is very much focused to be the platform for the automotive industry in, in general. This is going to give confidence to the suppliers so that they really know the data are only used by the people who they approved the data for and only for the use cases they approved it for. So their IDSA plays a major role, which is kind of a sister association to the, to the ProStep EWIP. That's how we try to motivate them, but indeed there is uh, the challenges since it's only scaling if everybody really goes onto these platforms. I really see so many uh, parallels between the automotive industry and aerospace and also the way we have to work with our suppliers to uh, onboard them in the journey to Industry 4.0. Um, and for sure at Airbus also we have um, had quite a number of progresses on that with connected plants, now with the 5G that allows us to really connect more data from our production um, process. It, we also have the product in the loop actually, so the data flowing back from the product to help us understand how it's really operated. And so it's through this data that we can really draw a lot of value and produce new services, uh, new business models. And um, it's extremely exciting to see how we all have to face the same uh, problems and that it's through associations like Postep IWEB uh, that we can solve them because they're industry-wide problems where we need to onboard also our suppliers, customers, regulatory authorities and so on. And that can only happen through collaborative work in projects, uh, in industry associations and in neutral bodies like our Postep IWEB. Andre, one more question that is on my mind. When we talk about digital transformation, it's really the people uh, that drive this transformation. Can you uh, tell me a little bit your perspective on people in the digital transformation? That, that's actually the key success factor, and that's probably the hardest thing. Technology, where I was talking about those workflow systems and so on, that's technology you can implement and roll out. If you talk about people, you talk about culture, then it's a longer process, let's say. And if you want really to drive the digitalization, people need to accept it. Decisions have to be taken much faster since with a paper process, you have your time. Now you have to decide very fast. And so the, the level of decision needs to be where the knowledge is. Managers need to accept that, that not everything is anymore decided by them. That's one cultural change you have to do. The people who have to decide it have to accept it. And there's lots of, uh, let's say, cultural methods like agile uh, methods you can use to help that. But it's, that's going to take time. Uh, it takes effort. It takes uh, lots of understanding also from the management since it really needs to change from the top of the company. If the company is on the top very hierarchical, you will never gain the speed you need to have and that's something we have to focus on, where we also at SEAT have many initiatives uh, to do so. So we have an initiative called Be the Impulse, where we try to push that kind of new culture forward. But that's definitely a key. Mm. 
It's a culture and it's also knowledge. People need to learn and you need to recognize uh, that learning because it's through the knowledge that really people contribute um, to the transformation. And again, I think that's where associations like Postdev IWeb can really uh, contribute a lot because through these joint projects, they can learn from other companies and other partners um, to really build uh, internal knowledge and competences. Right. Our talk is called Push to the Future, and we are going to do just that right now. Uh, look into the future. Andre, from your perspective, what will the automotive industry look like in 10 years from now? Maybe I start with the next one, two, three uh, years uh, radar first. The so software is the key driver at the moment. The integration uh, of the software into our cars, complete new software architectures, really functional uh, engineering also on the software and together with the hardware. Uh, we will see and we see cars already which develop over their life cycle, so with remote online updates where we really can kind of modernize the car while the car is being used. We will see more and more uh, functions, mainly driven by, by safety functions as well. We will see more and more assistance in our cars. And from there, I mean, I don't know whether it's five years, six years, eight years, but we will also see fully autonomous cars. The cars will be for sure much more safe. We will have car-to-car -car communication. I mean, you have airplane-to-airplane -airplane communication for long years as well. And if they would be on a collision course, they would do something. And if cars would do the same thing, uh, that's probably not far away from, from today. And this will drive, I, I mean, if you only think of autonomous cars and you could by the push of a button, you would have your car in front of wherever you need it and the car is driving you somewhere. That's going to drive complete different business models since maybe people don't really need to have a car like 20 hours sitting in the garage, but they need it for the time where they need it. And this will be a dramatic change to the business models of our industry as well. So that's how far I can look. I mean, if we get our act together, maybe we have flying cars or, or driving airplanes, I don't know, but there is uh, lots of fantasy uh, being open, I think, for that. How do you see that? Aviation is an industry that does not move very fast. Uh, I think it also comes from our safety culture, where we take steps carefully. But for sure, a very big challenge for us is uh, sustainability. So I think in a 10-year horizon, we will have made some progress uh, or definitely on sustainable aviation fuel the drop-in replacement for fossil-based fuels. We will also have made some progress on the hydrogen-based propulsion, new materials, uh, we will build lighter planes, that means also more efficiency. So for us, it's definitely a sustainable aerospace that we are striving for at Airbus. And uh, beyond that, it will be more of the same. Safety remains one key driver, efficiency of our products remains one key driver to really satisfy our customers with uh, outstanding products that are performing and leading them to be successful, because in the end, we can only be successful if our customers are successful with our product. Yeah, I think that's a, a great idea and we could probably talk uh, for hours. So if maybe we leave that to your symposium and then people can go deeper and exchange on that. At the end of our meeting, I want to really thank you, Andre, for your open exchange and um, frank answers and also for hosting us here in Casa Seat in the heart of Barcelona. It's a really beautiful setting and thank you for that. Hey Henry, I have to thank you that you came here. It, you were very welcome and uh, to be continued, I would say. Thank you very much. Yeah.